uh, I almost said Young Link. No, that's Toon Link versus uh, Pyro and Mithra. Right, don't see much PS2. change. Yeah, honestly, we really don't like. I feel like he kind of Toon Link kind of gets overshadowed by Young Link a little bit, but Toon Link still has some stuff. Yeah. Definitely it's... not a character to sleep on. Absolutely not. They're just like. There are two different ways to approach the idea of zoning with similar initial tools, but different attributes that can make going about that zoning fundamentally different. Uh, Toon Link is a whole lot floatier, uh, for one, and has better airspeed in addition to that. But when you're talking about speed, you've got to look no closer than, no further, excuse me, than, uh, than Mithra, who keeps up with the guard with the entire cast though it can com come at the cost of a little bit of weight as that forwarder takes the stock for uh, local man Maddie. Ooh, for say <laughs> you know Mithra players or Aegis players depending on how much they switch uh, are gonna have such a roll habit because they're rewarded for it <laughs> yeah or it rolls spot dodge air dodge like, basically <laughs> Any dodge move that has the fourth set on it, Mithra's rewarded so much more for it if she can time it correctly compared to most characters. I just hold down the triggers and watch her go. So now it's at 128, it's promptly Pyra time for exactly this reason. The extra range and power can make her so much scarier to face even though you know her, her burst range isn't nearly as pr uh, prominent as Mithra's. Because she can do things like that. One jump call out is all it takes. And then he, Kira switches right back to Mithra. That's safe. Hmm. Well, it's safe enough, at least. Yeah, yeah. Toon Link Guppy is, like, surprisingly safe on block. Considering, like, it, it can be used as, like, a outer shield option. So you think if they whiff that or blo uh, on block, it wouldn't be safe. But it is. Gotta be careful of these double jumps. But I like how... Patient Kira is playing this in the corner, not trying to hold forward into all of young uh, guys. Toon Link's zoning tools. <laughs> uh, poor Toon Link, the forgotten stepchild. <laughs> yeah, it, it really, it honestly, it really feels that way sometimes. Dash that coming through. Okay, no, a really nice uh, landing catch for Maddie as he. Once again, repositions re back and center stage, holding firm. He hasn't really left the Pokeball if he can help it, but you gotta be careful with that uh, prominence revolt. Holding down can be such a powerful reversal. Yeah, we see Kira use the, the side B a lot for ledge trapping. And I feel like um, I'm just waiting for Maddie to, to roll up from ledge sometimes. Just so you get past the sword and then try to apply pressure on the uh, swordless pyro. Oh, he went for the footstool. He was trying yeah, to be I think spicy. The <laughs> <laughs> this, there's a lot of the burning edge in, uh, just in neutral and on landing. He's using it as a as a means just to dominate the space that Maddie once had such a massive control with. As 80% in a blink of an eye. That throw won't do it, though. Air dodge was used. Yeah, I feel like most sword characters, like, at the range that... Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, the double snipe. Gonna take the stock for a uh, local man, Manny. But I thought I was trying to say that the, the range most sword characters, or most projectile characters want to be against sword characters is, like, the exact same range that Mithra, or Pyrus Saibi goes. So... Like, you, you kind of have to adjust when fighting this character. Like, it's a sword character with a very good projectile. So you might be kind of throwing off your usual game plan. Yeah, a projectile that powers through most other projectiles, given yeah, how... Yeah, that too. You know, talk about landing hitboxes. Just come down with that nair, watch a kill. <laughs> Pyra, Pyra kills you in so many different ways that you have to... You have to respect so much of the options that are coming out from her in the same way that you have to respect a Mithra for air dodging, repeat air dodging and rolling repeatedly. Like there's so much to think about with either character that it can be it can be a little bit tricky to play around.
Still, I really liked what was coming out from uh, from Maddie in the opening half of that game. He looked like he had a really firm grasp on neutral and was dominating center stage for basically the entirety of the first two stocks. But once he fell behind and once Kira kind of resigned to the mentality of, hey, uh, all what you're all of what you're doing is based around the pressure that you get from boomerang and from bombs blazing edge powers through all of those so how are you going to play around it and maddie couldn't adapt in that game but he might have this extra moment in between to come up with a game plan and execute it in the, in this game too yeah getting around that getting around that side b has to be like objective number one for maddie going into the next game it, it honestly like you mentioned just kind of destroyed like most of two and like neutral game plan so you're gonna have to Figure out something new to get around that, and you know there are new characters. It's been like what two weeks, a week or so uh, since they came like out. That. You know, maybe maybe you haven't figured it out yet, but you got to figure it out now <laughs> because if, if you can't, that's that's the set. You know, or it could potentially lead to the set loss. Yeah, we could be seeing maybe it's a, a counter pick or a stage choice that could really benefit Toon Link. A main difference of Toon Link compared to the other two is that Toon Link's a whole lot floatier and has much better air acceleration which you can use to abuse Pyra in a lot of ways. Maybe not so Mithra, and you'll have to come up with your own game plan for that character, because, oh boy, that's a that's a can of worms. But at the very least, you don't want to get invalidated by one move and let Kira autopilot through this game, because you can punish autopiloting. So yeah. come trying to find maybe like a town and city, utilize the bigger airspeed, but still having those platforms, and try to go air-to-air -air with Pyra a little bit more, particularly when she doesn't have the sword and literally can't defend herself, <laughs> it would be it would uh, it would be an option that he can go for. But we'll have to see what Maddie ends up uh, deducing from that game one. Yeah, and see, all right, it seems like we're getting right back into it. I think did Kira just switch to to Pyra to start? Oh no, still Mithra starting. Okay. They just have the spoiler skin on. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I forget the name of that character, but it, I know it's a spoiler. <laughs> Sounds like pneumonia, I think, but not. <laughs> it's not. It's not pneumonia, but it has like like saying like P N U as its first three letters, so it's like whatever. Xenoblade. <laughs> Oh, trying to get those back air chains, and here, another stage with that I that uh, more more central air to to occupy, uh, being FD, I and mean, it might be the reason we see Mithra dominating the start of this game, despite Pyra having so much success for the latter of game one. Here we go, nice simple combo up tilt up air. Ooh, tried to shake down Pyra in the air, but doesn't quite get, doesn't quite land his mark. Oh my god. He's goodness. going for it. <laughs> yeah, definitely going super deep for the edge guard. Yeah, throwing the bombs, looking to challenge midair as much as he can. He had the chance at a turnaround, but finally getting one of those, getting a grab on that risky dash attack. Oh my goodness! That was such good coverage, but just misses the up air. Doesn't get, doesn't find that kill. Normally you see bomb fair, but it looks like he was really expecting DI in and. Kira, wisely enough, didn't give it to him. Man, Maddie has so much. Like, just he's trying to really do some stuff on uh, whenever Kira pulls up shield because he's just running straight headfirst into it and not hitting a button. But that roll getting caught so fiercely gives Kira a or snatches the lead back from Maddie for Kira. Yeah, this is uh, sort of similar to a lot of the last game went, you know. Maddie was able to do really well in the beginning, but, you know, Kira was able to take the lead and just didn't let it go. So, I wonder if we're going to be seeing a similar situation right now. Oh, but wow. Did you see how far Mitha went? <laughs> All the way down. And the fully charged force, yeah, he can't punish those neutral bees as reliably as you think. And they have... I think they, despite the massive charge and the massive hitbox, they only last for some, like, 30 frames or something. So they they can get back to active real quick. As Danny is, is. residing to up smash mode a little bit. 
dude. <laughs> Right, oh, okay, up. that back throw should be... Oh, yep, he, there it is. He only, it only did because he air dodged, though. There we go, see? Alright, so there we see Maddie getting above the, the side B a little bit more. We're able to get... jump in and land. Just has to read whatever the escape option is afterwards. Okay, not per missing that uh, one combo. Trying to lead up tilt into F tilt really hurt him, not accounting for the range. And losing neutral against Pyra can be such a uh, such a hassle, but sniping that jump. Oh, I wonder if that up was reversed, if it would have uh, connected all the way. That's what I was thinking. Like, if he had reversed that, it probably would have put him in not only a better position, would it, but could have just hit. <laughs> hit all of its hits. Oh, okay. Good job punching the side with the Photon Edge. Yeah, solid 20-some damage, uh, especially since that, I think that was one of the first times we oh, saw Photon Edge. But his jump, his jump got sniped. Yeah, the, he double jumped right when the arrow hit him. And this is the a big chance for Maddie if he can come down with something strong. The bomb prevents him from a potentially larger follow-up, though, still getting hit by the Blazing Edge. Side B's going to come down. Okay, just looking to reset and maintain, maintain his position on stage. Uh, 96 against Pyra is death percent. Particularly if you get hit by your own bombs and just serve yourself up on a silver platter like that. Oh wow, that bomb clipped him. And Boomerang coming back here is making sure to avoid it. Still playing very slowly, utilizing... The floatier nature of Pyra just to hold firm and threaten with all of her killing aerials. Oh, don't want to get up into the side V. Oh, yeah, that's going to be it. Yeah, floaty for floaty, air to air, but Pyra's range is just so much further. And once he saw the bomb pull, that was the time to strike. Kira playing around... Um, Maddie's base habits pretty successfully throughout that entire set.